Ash and Elms. Uh, Ian Elms, the brothers. Brad Johnson. All right. I have brothers, but... <laughs> he's the, he's, he's like the third Elms yes, I like to think of a brother. Oh, cool. And so you guys have been to Wichita before, right? Absolutely. I had a good fortune of coming here uh, twice before. This will be our third time. Oh, wow. So in 2013 with our film Lost on Purpose, uh, 2015 last year with Waffle Street, and now this year as the advisor. Hopefully and we're coming back next year with small town back. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice, nice. So what drew you to Tallgrass in the first place? They actually came after yeah. us with Lost on Purpose. Lila said she saw the film at a festival and that she loved it and she wanted to bring it in. And uh, we didn't know we didn't know much about it uh, in 2013. But when we came here, it was, there's such a sense of community and a sense of family. And, uh, oh, cool. It's our favorite film festival. Too, so. Oh, that's when we awesome. We made Waffle Street because Waffle Street was my first movie that uh, working with these guys. Oh, okay. And they're like, we have to go to Tallgrass. It's the best festival, and it really is. That's yeah. awesome. We were twisting arms to make sure. Waffle yeah. Street got here. Oh wow, <laughs> that's awesome, awesome. And so you're back on you're back here for the advisory board. So what is your role in that? Um, Be well, beyond advising, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's <laughs> obviously young filmmakers, uh -huh. um, yeah. showing them the ropes. I also enjoy the, the opportunity to meet the up and coming next generation filmmakers, which you guys give a wonderful opportunity to with. Cool, yeah. yeah with the high school we love the program that they have, where they, uh, you know, cultivating these younger minds. And, yeah. And then we get to come in and and uh, talk to them. Them. I mean, <laughs> yeah. bestow our knowledge upon them. <laughs> yeah, it's really awesome. I mean, it's an honor, actually, that they invited us to come back to be a part of it because mm -hmm. um, we love trying to do what we can to help other people and yeah. give, give, give back to a festival that has given us a lot. And then I think we're doing, you and I are doing a panel today at 3.30, and we're going to be talking about sort of our trials, tribulations, what we learn in casting and financing. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Which are, to us, kind of the pillars of making a film. You gotta have a, a cast that's viable, which also feeds you a budget. So. And right. we promise we're not gonna stay on top. Yeah. It's, it's gonna be free for <laughs> no one's trying to I can't you. believe that at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's we'll start awesome. strong. That yeah, way. we'll start with that. I am uh, Alex Megaro. I am the producer and editor of Driftwood, and I'm from New York City. Cool, cool, cool. And what's your, your film about? Uh, okay, so Driftwood is a film about a woman who washes up on the beach, and she is kind of a blank slate of a person. She's taken in by an older man back to his cabin in the woods, and he retrains her and reconditions her to become kind of a human again, and also to be his maid and his wife and his daughter kind of all simultaneously, and oh. some strangeness ensues. And also, it's a film that has no dialogue in it. Oh, wow, really? Yes. Wow, wow, wow. So what kind of challenges did that bring, just acting-wise? Um, for the actors, it was a lot. I mean, it was a purely, it's all physical performances. Yeah, yeah, purely yeah. Purely physical. And, I mean, for them, I don't know, I'm sure it was challenging because it's different, but sure. they were so good and cast specifically for their type that I think naturally they had that in them. Yeah. And while it may have proven a challenge to a degree, it was still uh, not as crazy as you would expect. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why the choice to have a dialogue free film? Uh, well, Paul, the director, and I... We really enjoy films that are more, they emphasize visual storytelling. We have right. nothing against dialogue driven films, no, no, but yeah. we, that's just what we like. And we, we always want to make films that are more visual than dialogue based. So we decided for the first feature, uh, Paul's thinking, why don't we just take it to the nth degree, take it as far as we can, we'll do a full feature, no dialogue whatsoever. And I said, of course, let's do it. Nice. So we went nice. for the crazy challenge and we pulled it off apparently. My name is Aaron Wolf. I'm from Elizabethtown, New York. Okay, cool. And what is the name of your film? My film is To Be a Miss. And what's it about? To Be a Miss is about three young women that want to be the next Miss Venezuela. That's the simple explanation. Oh, cool. Um, but it's a verite film, it's very raw, and it kind of follows not only their story, but the story of this country that's really embraced beauty pageant culture and all that goes along with it. Okay. And I think in so doing it becomes uh, much more than just a narrative about trying to get to a goal, it becomes a kind of story of, of seeking identity and trying to figure out both as people and as countries who we really are. Oh, wow. wow. And what drew you to this story? You know, I could almost say that I was not drawn to this story. Really? Because beauty pageants are kind of a cliche in documentary. Yeah. And um, I was in Venezuela on a lecture tour that was supported by the uh, U.S. State Department. It was called 
the American Documentary Showcase. I don't know if they do it anymore, but it was this really okay. wonderful opportunity to send filmmakers abroad, particularly oh. filmmakers who had kind of called into question U.S. policy. Okay. I made this film called King Corn, which looked at, you know, ag subsidies and the obesity epidemic, and, and they gave me the chance to show it and talk about it in, in Venezuela. And when I was there, I met a young American who was living there, and uh, he had talked about a project that he wanted to develop about beauty pageants, and I, I might have even rolled my eyes, because yeah. I was just... I've seen that movie, I thought to myself. Right. But the more yeah. he told me about it, the more he showed me how it was off the charts in Venezuela. And the more he showed me that it was really a story about how um, how we, as I said, you know, find our voice in the world, it came to seem much more universal and much more poignant, and I'm so thrilled.